What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. It's been a while. I'm gonna give you five different trends that I think are going to grow and become a thing here in 2025 as a UI UX designer. Now, the first is going to be the no to low code tools such as Wix Studio, Framer, Webflow, and similar tools. Now, these no code environments allow us UI UX designers not just to live within tools like Figma, simply designing prototypes and mockups, but it allows us to essentially replace the front end developer without having to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Because browser technology gets better, these browser based tools are also getting better. And it's really allowing us to do things that before required a lot of JavaScript knowledge, a lot of interactions, micro interactions, animations, etc. Number two is Rive. So this is a tool and Rive is absolutely amazing. And if you follow me at all throughout the past few months on this channel, you know that I'm a super huge fan of Rive. So Rive is poised to become this generation's flash. It allows you to build responsive layouts that then can be embedded onto a web page with a canvas element. You can also use JavaScript to pass back and forth data, making the logic dynamic. Now there's a few things they still need to implement such as accessibility concerns and also blurs and glows because really it is their own render engine and what makes it really powerful and very cool is the fact that it can just run on not just web pages but also other environments like unity for game development um, c and c plus plus there's a ton of different platforms it can run on now i've already produced a bunch of tutorials on rive which are going to be linked here in the youtube description number three is another tool and it's one that's upcoming that i have access to it is called unicorn studio now, Unicorn Studio is a tool that I had hoped that would really be built some point in the future a few years ago. And that is because it takes a lot of coding knowledge to be able to pull off 3JS-like graphics and shader effects. And that's exactly what Unicorn Studio allows you to do in a no-code environment. So it has a graphical user interface, it's web-based, and it allows you to quickly integrate effects like uh, 3JS particle-based effects and shaders so that you can then export it and import it onto your web page as well, similar to how the Rive workflow works. Now, unfortunately, it's still in closed beta. However, the founder has mentioned that it will be opened up into open beta either this month in January 2025 or in February. Now, the next one is going to be a big one, and that is AI's influence over the UI UX design industry. Trust me, people, there's a lot of doom and gloom about AI. And if you're new to UI UX or almost anything computer related these days, you might be asking yourself, is it worth it spending the time to learn this career and this profession and these skills if AI is going to take my job? Yes, right now there's a few web-based apps like Bolt and Lovable, which allow anybody any Joe Schmo who's never touched code or design, they can give a prompt, say, I want an app that does this, and it will spit out an entire app back in front end with a UI that actually looks pretty decent. The problem is, is I have not seen a single instance, and there is no evidence that I've seen yet that says this is going to replace human designers, not as it currently stands. And that's because a lot of these tools simply use different UI kit component libraries such as Shad CN to spit out cookie cutter based templates. So sure, if you need a dashboard or a client needs a dashboard design, that's not a lot of creative work that goes into that process. You could go buy a dashboard template or you could ask AI to produce a template for you for a dashboard and that's perfectly fine. But when it comes to things like landing pages and more challenging use cases as it pertains to UI UX, you still need the human factor. But that's why that now is the time in which it is more important than ever that you have to level your skills up and you have to also tack on additional skill sets that relate to UI, in my opinion. So ask yourself, why would somebody hire a human-based UI UX designer whose subpar kind of crappy skill sets when they can just prompt an AI and get something that's spit out of similar quality? So that's why you really need to level up your skills. You have to 
obviously understand all the foundational UI UX principles such as white space, contrast and color, topography, all that good stuff that goes into it. And you also have to be better than what AI is currently producing. Now, here's the thing, not much has ever changed. That's always been the case. Why? Because we have templates. We have beautifully paid templates. We have free templates and there's a big market for that and people use that. But you don't want those type of clients. They're looking for something cheap. So you want to be the type of person that has the skill sets to really give us next level UI and UX. Now, if true AGI comes out, then we're all screwed. And who cares then at that point anyways? Number five is UI design trends themselves. And I'm talking about the aesthetics, the visual trends that we're going to see coming into 2025. And while I give my little spiel, I'll show some examples of what I believe will be indicative of the type of UIs and the type of aesthetics that we'll see here in 2025. Now in 2023 and 2024, we began emerging out of the shell of flat design. So the UIs we're creating now are more vibrant, they're more colorful, they have gradients, they have blurs, they have drop shadows, which kind of sounds daunting and it is because those are things that you have to learn how to apply correctly in the right scenario. Sometimes you don't need a blur and a drop shadow together. So you have to understand when to use these things and when not to use these things as well. Now, because of tools like Rive, Unicorn Studio, Spline 3D, and Greensock Animation Platform, we're going to continue seeing the increased adoption of building out UIs that are animated and interactive, especially for things like creative landing pages. These tools are affording designers more freedom to express their UIs in interactive and animated ways, which should certainly excite everybody. It's one thing to design a simple landing page in Figma, but it's an entirely different thing to have the ability to make that mock-up a reality in the browser in one that's responsive and interactive. So understanding motion design and animation and interaction is going to be a big factor going into 2025 if you really want to increase your ability to land clients or land jobs. So if you're super interested in learning all about UI UX going forward into 2025, definitely check out my course at designcourse.com where I have an interactive UI UX course of over 16 hours of video. This is a course that will really teach you the foundational UI UX principles from the very ground up while working within Figma. So definitely check that out. And I'm super excited to release my upcoming 100% free crash course. I do this every year on UI UX design here for 2025. That should be coming out in the next week or two. All right, so I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.